This is the POCO X3, POCO's first original design of the year. But as it is with most things in life, it's not what the looks that counts, but what's inside. So has the POCO X3 got what it takes to be the successor to the POCO X2? Well, let's find out in today's unboxing. Hey guys, Omoto here from C4E Tech. And if you do end up enjoying my unboxing video, then please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. We have an all black box for the POCO X3 with the name of the phone written on the top. And there's some branding to the top and bottom as well. The sides have some more branding. Guess POCO is pushing that 120Hz refresh rate pretty hard. And to the bottom, we have this sticker. A unit comes with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. It's a shadow gray variant. As expected, the back has the spec highlights. Enough looking around the box though, let's take off that lid and see what's inside. First, we are greeted by this yellow insert that holds the SIM ejector pin, a POCO user guide, and finally a transparent silicone case. Keeping them aside, let's take a look at the phone itself. Taking it out of the protective plastic wrap, peeling off the sticker from the back, and there we have it. Seeing it in person, I must say that's a very weird looking camera bump. As for now, I'll keep the POCO X3 aside and take a look at what else we get inside the box. We have the 33 watt fast charger and a Type-C charging cable. Coming back to the POCO X3, the first thing that caught my eye is the newly designed back. This is POCO's own design and we can see the brand name written in big bold letters across the back of the device. The camera bump too has been redesigned entirely from scratch. The only semblance with the previous generation POCO X2 being the holographic 3D ring that surrounds it. Now, design choices aside, POCO also made a shift in materials. The X3 comes with a polycarbonate back, although it still retains the reflective finish. So in hand, the X3 is still slippery as ever, attracts a ton of fingerprints and smudges, but it is a bit heftier from the POCO X2, despite the move from Corning's Gorilla Glass 5 to plastic. The reason? Well, POCO has managed to cram in a 6000 mAh battery in here. That's about a 33% increase in battery size for a measly 17 extra grams of weight. Now, me personally, I never was a fan of the POCO X2 design, but honestly, I prefer it over the huge, weirdly shaped camera bump of the X3. But I want to know what you guys think. Which one of these two is a better looker? Glass or plastic bag? Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. As for the rest of the build, the POCO X3 is incredibly similar to the X2. So we have the volume and power keys on the right edge. The fingerprint scanner is still integrated into the power button. I really like the placement here. The phone's ready and unlocked even before I can bring it up to my face. Speaking of which, face unlock is here and it works well too. Anyway, going back to the placements, we have the secondary mic, the IR blaster, and what I think is the proximity sensor up top. Yep, the POCO X2 didn't have the proximity sensor here since they'd have squeezed it inside the pill-shaped cutout for the dual selfie cameras. However, the X3 has swapped out the 20 plus 2 megapixel combo for a single 20 megapixel snapper. So we just have a small circular punch hole in the center of the display. The rest of the panel though has remained the same. So same 6.67 inch IPS panel, same Corning Gorilla Glass 5 production, it's got nice colors, gets bright enough for outdoor usage, and the best part, it's still 120 hertz. Now, one of the recurring problems with the POCO X2 had been the fact that the Snapdragon 730G inside it just wasn't powerful enough to push a steady 120 frames per second. So the experience was kind of lackluster. We noticed a few drop frames here and there. Well, POCO has tried to fix that here by putting in a more powerful Snapdragon 732G chip. Now, numbers don't lie, so as far as benchmarks go, the POCO X3 is more powerful. But has it gotten rid of all those micro stutters and frame drops? Well, that's something I can only say in a full review. As far as gaming goes, both chips share the same Adreno 618 GPU and as expected, it was able to handle Call of Duty Mobile. Now, to get the maximum out of that 120 FPS screen, we decided to switch over to Alto's Odyssey. And guys, the gameplay felt super smooth. Like the POCO X2, the touch response here is also at 240Hz and I could feel it in the general snappiness of the UI. Speaking of UI, we have MIUI for POCO on the X3. It's based on the global MIUI 12 ROM, but comes with some sweet extras like the POCO launcher and the one most of us looks forward to, no ads. 
Now, MIUI 12 is visually refreshing and we can see the changes from the about phone app to the redesigned notification shape or as MIUI calls it, the control center. Of course, all these features are nothing new. We have seen it before in other MIUI 12 implementations, including the one on the POCO X2. Let's then turn our attentions to what is new here, the 33% bigger battery. Now, both the 730G and 732G are 8 nanometer processors. The displays on both phones are the same as well, which means we expect that the 1500 mAh increase in capacity would give us a pretty nice boost in battery life. And to charge up the massive battery, we now have a 33 watt charger, with the company claiming that the faster charger can juice up the bigger battery in a similar amount of time as the 27 watt charger can do for the 4500 mAh battery on the POCO X2. There are a few other minor improvements as well, like the POCO X3 coming with stereo speakers. They can get pretty loud and have a nice warm sound to them. The headphone jack is also retained and it's at the bottom, beside the Type-C port, primary mic and the speaker grill. Along with that, the P2i nano coating of the X2 has now been replaced with an actual IP53 certification. Unfortunately, the POCO X3 still continues with the hybrid SIM slot, so buyers have to choose between dual SIMs or expandable storage. Can make things kinda tricky for people who have their eyes on the base variant. After all, that comes with 6 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM and 64 gigs of UFS 2.1 storage. We can upgrade to 6128 and there's even a 8128 gig variant. Now while the POCO X3 has improved on the X2 in certain areas, when it comes to optics, well, the situation gets a bit hazy. Both phones come with the same quad camera module to the back. So we have a primary 64 megapixel, a 13 megapixel ultrawide, and the customary 2 megapixel macro and depth sensors. That being said, the devil is in the detail. The primary sensor on the POCO X2 is the Sony IMX686, while the one on the X3 is the IMX682. Technically, that's a downgraded sensor, but the only difference between them is that the 686 can shoot 4K60, while the 682 cannot. Now, in this context, that shouldn't really matter since the limiting factor for both phones is the SoC. The Snapdragon 73X series is limited to 4K 30fps only. So, for all intents and purposes, these two sensors should behave the same should being the operative word, since when we look at them side by side, the POCO X3 actually has a slight edge. It gets better colors like punchier blues and vibrant greens. Detail wise though, both of them are excellent, but once more the X3 wins in terms of dynamic range. Now, as for low light, well the X3 comes out with the cleaner images. In some cases, the pictures do look a bit soft when compared to the X2, but that's just the processing here. It's heavy when it comes to noise reduction. I was so surprised by these findings that I decided to check out the rear portraits as well. And sure enough, it seems like the POCO X3 actually does better with the dynamic range even here. As expected though, both ended up taking equally sharp pictures. As for selfies, well, I went in expecting minimal changes, but it seems like once more the POCO X3 has the better dynamic range. That's quite interesting, and as far as edge detection goes, both phones were pretty much even. So that extra 2 megapixel depth sensor on the X2 looks like it was really just there for decoration. Anyway, so basically this completely changes my perception of the POCO X3. I went in expecting the X3 to do better when it comes to performance and battery life, but maybe falter a bit in the optics. Instead, it seems like the X3 is actually an overall upgrade over the X2, even in the camera department. Of course, it's a bit bulkier and made out of plastic. So yes, the build isn't as premium as the X2, but honestly, can we really complain when the base 664 GB variant of the X3 comes in at just 17,000 rupees? As for the X2, it costs 500 rupees more and the only advantage it brings to the table is the Gorilla Glass 5 sandwich build. Now it's too early to draw any conclusions, but initial impressions, it seems like the POCO X3 is a nice little upgrade over the POCO X2 with a price cut in too. So are you guys excited about the POCO X3? Do you think it has what it takes to become the king of the under 20k range? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we come to the end of this video. As always, like, share, subscribe, and oh, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching till the end, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.